your analysis of Anthony Richardson and uh, his ceiling and floor for Thursday night, do you think, is what? Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't, you know, I think he would his his party would probably start at four with Indy as being in play there with Indy. Mm-hmm. And I would say what makes him the most intriguing player in this entire draft is I could see him, you know, as low as 23 to Minnesota. Hmm. So, so what that's can you remember a time where we've had a no. range like that? Well, I guess Aaron Rodgers, you know, in 04 where oh, he yeah, could be number one. To them, yeah. He could be number one overall if the Niners didn't choose Alex Smith and he dropped all the way down to 24 and we did leave, you know, we did leave Indianapolis. I think we were chit-chatting in the booth. Um, you know, there were some chatter, you heard it, I heard it. Maybe Richardson could be number one overall. That's how that's how yeah. talented he is with the ceiling that he has. Uh, but now we're hitting draft week, and uh, the evaluation appears to be all over the map for him. So walk me through your evaluation of Anthony Richardson, eye in the sky, pro day, the whole bit, entering this week, if you don't mind, Daniel. My my, my biggest uh, concern, Rich, is, is quite honestly just the sample size. You know, uh, everybody can talk about the, the numbers. They don't look great on paper, but as we documented at the Combine and showed the video of it, you know, I, you can't put that completion percentage on him completely. When you look at some of the balls that he threw that, that were dropped, that not only some, in some cases dropped, but, you know, conveniently turned into interceptions um, by some uh, some poor receiver play around him. He's got, he's got the ability to navigate within the pocket. I think he's got a, he's a really mechanically sound thrower. Like, he's got a, a, a great-looking throwing motion. He can drive the ball like nobody else in this draft can. Um, he's, uh, he's somebody that obviously is an athlete is, is something like we've never seen before. So there's lots of positives. They're quite simply rich. The biggest hang up is you're talking about 13 starts and there's the, you know, there's the presence of Trubisky who didn't start many games. There's Dwayne Haskins who didn't start many games. The, the guy who was the big hit who didn't start many games was Cam Newton who started only one more game than him, but Cam Newton. I mean, gosh, Rich, the guy went undefeated, won the Heisman Trophy, the national championship <laughs> on the heels of having won a junior college national championship. So he's not nearly as accomplished from that standpoint. Um, so I think there is there is so much to work with there with him. Um, but I would say, you know, and this not to sound harsh, but I would say I maybe would trust seven or eight teams in this league to properly develop a player like Anthony Richardson. Really? To go to the right spot. How about that? That is uh... – that is, you got you got you got a, a peg. Which teams do you think should wind up with him? Or he, if you if you could wave a wand for him and say these are the teams that he should wind up with because you know the spot, you know exactly what you said. Uh, our colleague Joel Klatt, Daniel, that we're going to be hanging with for the first two nights. Yeah. He was on the Thursday show, and I heard, heard his analogy is a Rubik's cube. You just don't know how many times. Uh, it, it would take to turn the cube to solve it for the player. Um, and I pointed out how some teams, in the same way you just said, um, need uh, several more turns or those videos where they hand it to some kid and he just flips it three times in one hand and he's solved it. <laughs> what do you got for me on that front with well, Richardson? Yeah, I, I, I we, we love analogies because I had used, and me and Joel had talked about this in the past, and uh, I had used kind of the lottery ticket analogy, which was, look, if all these guys are at risk, you know, which one has the biggest payout? And that's uh, Anthony Richardson. So apparently we, me and Joel had different hobbies as kids. Um, nice. But um, by, by the way, do you remember the keychain, the Rubik, when they made the little mini of Rubik's course. Cube that oh, was yeah. also a keychain? Yeah, yeah. Oh, bring that. Let's bring that back. Those were easier to break apart and put um, back together to make it look like you solve it. That's what I did back in the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no question. I mean, when I, when you look at teams, to me, and again, this is me looking at where I would love to see him go. And Seattle, I don't think they're taking one, but Seattle would be perfect. But you know, let him let him sit a little bit behind Gino. I think Gino would be a great mentor for him. I think you know they could really cut him loose up there eventually. I, I love that. I love that fit for him. Um, you know, even Indianapolis, just selfishly, I would like to see them unleash, you know, the, the running attack of all running attacks with him and Jonathan Taylor in the background, in the backfield. Can you imagine that? I mean, mm. pick your poison as a, on a zone read with those two guys. Um, so those would be the two I think would be great for him. And I think they would, uh, they would have a chance to, to, uh, to really help him maximize his ability. But uh, you've got 
got to have the plan in place. You've got to have the right people to develop him. Um, and in some ways, Rich, as we as these phone calls and texts keep flooding in over the last few days, and we'll continue on till Thursday night, mm-hmm. the less I continue to hear about Anthony Richardson, makes me think maybe there's something brewing in here that we're not ready for. There you go, Daniel Jeremiah, dropping some hints, a little breadcrumbs right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free.